Thank you. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we come before you today, God, thanking you and praising you for your great name. And God, for who you are, for how you love us and how you care for us, God, and how you provide for us. Father, this morning as we are gathered here in this place, Lord, may our hearts be opened to hear from you and may you speak to our hearts. Lord, you know what we need. You know where we are in life. God, you know our needs. So God, may you pour out your spirit upon us this morning as we are gathered here. Father, I thank you for each person that's represented here. And God, I pray that they feel your presence today, Lord. We pray for those who aren't able to be with us this morning for various reasons. You know those who are sick and need a special touch from you. And God, we ask that you touch them this morning and may they feel your presence today. Father, we also see that uh, when we gather here, uh, there are many distractions to try to keep us from hearing from you. And so, God, we pray that your hand be placed upon this sanctuary that... Uh, the evil one will not be able to enter in and that we can truly gather and worship you this morning and focus on you and who you are and how great you are today. God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. And we pray this your son's wonderful name. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see all of you here this morning. Thank you all for being here today. And I pray that as you're gathered here that you do feel a uh, fresh touch from God. And we do see there are distractions. I told somebody this past week. Uh, I said, uh, man, those screens have been working perfect. We haven't had any issues with them. And we see now today what's going on. So uh, I pray that they don't distract you from hearing from what God has to say and that we can focus on Him today. It's a special day, a lot of special things going on uh, today, and uh, I pray that you can hear from the Lord. So I want to take a moment uh, also this morning to pray for our uh, students and faculty and staff as they are preparing uh, to return to school uh, in uh, just a few days. Our, I know our Brantley uh, staff will begin in service tomorrow and then our students on Friday. And so we want to take time to uh, pray for those. And so I, I'm going to call you out. And uh, if you are a, uh, if you're a um, teacher, faculty or staff, if you'd stand at this time so that we can recognize you. If you work in the school system anyway, just stand up, okay? In any education, anyway, you can stand up. All right. Uh, thank y'all so much for what you do. And, uh, and then our students, if y'all will stand too as you prepare to uh, return to school. Anybody that's a student that's going to school this year, y'all stand up, okay? <laughs> yeah, college, you can stand up too. All right. Have I made that clear enough, everybody? All right. Uh, thank y'all. Y'all stay standing so we can pray for y'all. We want to we wanna take some time to pray for y'all this morning. So uh, y'all remain standing. Let's pray together as we pray over our uh, faculty, staff, and our students. And thank you for all for what you do. And for you students, I pray this is a great year for you as well. Father, we come before you again, Lord, thanking you for this time that we can recognize uh, our faculty and our staff and uh, what they do. God, thank you for them. Lord, I pray that as they begin this new school year, that you will watch over and protect them and care for them. Lord, uh, God, uh, we pray that they will, uh, all of these in this room will be able to live uh, the Christian life and be examples for you in their schools and in the areas where they serve. God, we pray that you uh, protect our schools. We pray that you protect our teachers and faculty and um, staff and our children from uh, uh, just uh, all the evils of the world that are out there, God. We just pray that you watch over and protect them. God, I pray that you give harmony among our uh, fa faculty and staff, Lord, and even among our students and, and parents. God, I pray that they will all see that uh, what the uh, goal is uh, for uh, this year and for where you would have them to go. And so, God, give them harmony. God, I pray that you open up our students' minds for learning and achievement and that you just, uh, th these uh, teachers are able to pour into them. Father, I pray that our students and even our uh, uh, staff can also represent you and uh, lead others to follow you and to know you. God, I pray that you'll give them opportunities to make disciples among one another and to uh, just be evangelistic and share your gospel with those. Father, we watch. Over, we ask that you watch over them when it comes to uh, drugs and alcohol and uh, give our teenagers protection from that. God, we pray that you will just... Uh, 
Uh, Just fill them this year. Fill them with your love. Fill them with your presence. And Lord, may their lives just be lights for you. God, we just pray also for their safety uh, in in buses and on campus. And Lord, we thank you for these who are here and their commitments to you and for what they mean to you. And Lord, I pray that they can be uh, your light uh, to the world this year. Father, we pray for our superintendent, our school board members, our, uh, the faculty, the support staff, principals, uh, teachers, students, and parents. God, you fill them this year and use them. Lord, I pray that uh, this 2022-2023 school year is a special year. And God, that we see your hand at work uh, amongst uh, those from Mount Zion Church. Lord, thank you for this time that we can take to pray over them, continue to use them, continue to bless us in this service. Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, we pray this your son's wonderful name. Amen. Thank you all so much, and I pray that you do have a great school year, and I know it's it's hard to believe that uh, summer is now coming to a close. And you say, boo, boo, boo for that. But I will say this, Wednesday night meals are coming. So <laughs> Harrison, you come and continue to lead us. Hymn number four.
We sang this song last week as a special. Um, of course, I had planned this service before I looked at that, so we, we thought it would go well today with our service too. So if you will, please stand and sing with us, goodness of God.
worship your holy name the name of Jesus thank y'all our children can be dismissed for children's church at this time We uh, will partake of the Lord's Supper here shortly, but uh, several things going on today. But one of the things, uh, several months ago, I just got thinking about uh, kind of having a testimony service and, and a time where we can share some testimony and hear from some who have uh, a special testimony to share. James chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through 4 say, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Several weeks ago, we heard from our students, and we saw their commitments that they made uh, uh, through our time at uh, missions camp this year. And we just saw what God had done in their heart and in their lives. And so I wanted to do something today and for us to hear from a couple of our adults and what God has done in their lives over the last couple of years or over the last year and over the last two years and so um, I, I want to ask uh, Hope Farmer and Mark Andrews to come and share their story about what God has been doing in their lives uh, over this time. Uh, we know, uh, bo- most of us know their story and uh, what has happened to them, but I want them to share about uh, what God has done. And so I believe that both of them can probably say and, and can say confidently that God has provided for our every need uh, through this trial, through the, this, this time that we've gone. And so uh, I appreciate you guys coming and sharing today, and so I hope you come and share first. Donnie, we we'll probably need to turn this pulpit mic on uh, for them. Now, I, I gave them a time limit, but what I didn't tell them is I got a cushion there too. So uh, they all each have 45 minutes. So. I need to write some more stuff down. Good morning, y'all. Um, this is my first time to speak, so y'all pray for me. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for his goodness, his mercy, his faithfulness, and his promise to never leave or forsake us. He's been my rock, my strength, my light in a very dark time. And Psalms 33, 20 says, our hope is in the Lord. He is our help and shield. For him, I would not be standing here today. And I want to make sure everything I say and do will bring honor and glory to his name. Also, I want to thank Brother Mark for asking me to speak, and he's right. He only gave me 10 minutes to, for, to recap a whole year. Um, and then I also want to take a minute to extend my thanks to so many of you. Your unwavering prayers calls, text, gifts, visits, and meals. Oh, all those meals. I'm so thankful for those because Tim gets cranky when he's hungry. <laughs> and I, did, I couldn't cook a whole lot. So um, we thank you for all of those. I even had someone pay to have my house cleaned for me. Um, that was nice. And Miss Jerry, I think all those blueberry smoothies got me on my feet. Um, but I'm, Tim and I both are very grateful and thankful to our Mount Zion family for, for all that you've done for us, and we are truly humbled about that. Um, you know, the Bible speaks about bad news, specifically bad news. I didn't know that until a few weeks ago during my quiet time. I was reading, and I came across this verse in Psalms, Psalms 112. It says, have no fear of bad news. For I am able to bring good out of evil. So that just tells you. And things can change in an instant. On Saturday, August the 28th, we were about to head to Birmingham to watch grandchildren play ball. 
I felt the lump. I wasn't overly concerned because I was very good about having my mammograms and everything, but it was a long weekend. So Monday, when we got, well, we got back Sunday, but Monday I called the doctor and they made arrangements for me to go to Montgomery for a mammogram and a needle biopsy. So um, I had that done and the call came on September 1st from the doctor. She said, we have your results back and it is cancer. That was something I was not really prepared to hear. Um, I was in shock, so I knew I had to. I knew I had to go tell Tim. So I, I left work, I went to his store, and I told him. And the look on his face just hurt me to the core. But he looked at me and he said, "We're going to get through this." And he's been there every step of the way for me. He's never, he's never wavered, and I'm so grateful. Um, it took forever to get things going. So on, it was a Saturday in October. I was alone in my car. I had been to Andalusia, I think to the grocery store, and my mind was full of fear and, and doubt and despair was beginning to creep in. And then all of a sudden, I heard it. It was God's voice. And he said to me, do you trust me? And I said, yes. Yes, Lord, I do trust you. It reminded me of another of my favorite verses, Jeremiah 32, 27. I am God, the Lord of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? It was then I knew he was not done with me yet. So chemo started November the 5th. Uh, I was to have 12 rounds of one kind and then four of another, so a total of 16. And um, almost immediately, the chemo left me with my, in, in, my inability to taste my food. Not sick, but just I couldn't taste any food at all. That was right around Thanksgiving and Christmas, y'all. <sighs> Terrible timing. So anyway... Um, I didn't tolerate the chemo very well. So after about six weeks, the doctor decided to uh, run some more tests and do some things. And when I went back to talk to him, uh, he took me off of it for about three or four weeks, but he said, the chemo is working better than we anticipated. So we're going to skip the next six treatments that you were supposed to have and skip to those last four. <laughs> The last four were called Red Devil. And there's a good reason because it almost did me in. I was, well, I was happy and thankful that I didn't have to do 16. I only wound up having to do the 10. But I lost a lot of weight, very, very weak. And then I had another low point. My dad passed away on January the 20th. I was so sick and I was at home getting fluids I couldn't go to the hospital, couldn't be with him. And I just knew I had to give it to the Lord because it was a tough time not to be with him, taking his last breath. He was 93, very healthy all of his life. It was just a very crazy last minute thing, but I, I didn't get to say goodbye to him. But so many friends and family and prayers from people really leaned on a bunch of people during those dark days. Um, there were some days I felt so bad I couldn't even get out of bed. Sometimes I'd go two or three days laying in bed. I just couldn't get out. I, could, I, I just felt so bad. It just Chemo just drains you of everything. I know there's a lot of you in here that have had it or will, might even have, ha will have it. I don't know. It's just chemo's kind of crazy. Everybody's different. Um, but uh, then I had surgery on February, February the I know, my last treatment was on February the 19th, and then I had surgery on April the 29th. I'm still struggling to eat, but it's getting better. I am enjoying my new thinness, but I think I'd rather eat. <laughs> so um, my hands and feet are still numb a lot, and I have chemo brain. I'm very forgetful, stuff I can't remember sometimes, um, but... 
and I'm not quite finished with my journey. I have a hip replacement in September. Uh, Tim says I'm going to be a bionic woman after that. So um, It's been tough, I'm not going to lie, but I've been blessed with a wonderful husband, wonderful mother and father-in-law, our children, uh, special friends, and just so much prayer. Pray, people I didn't know prayed for me. People I didn't know brought us food. People I didn't know called and sent texts and sent letters. It was just so, it's been so humbling to have all of that love. Um, I want to close with a little story. As you know, Tim works for, for Mr. Mattress and Troy, and uh, it's owned by Jeffrey Douglas. Uh, Jeffrey and his family are a fantastic group of folks, a wonderful Christian family. Um, and Jeffrey's mother, her name is June, uh, she attends Southside Baptist Church in Andalusia. Well, her women's group makes uh, something they call prayer blankets. So he, he brought it home to me. I'm going to show it to you. And um, let's see if I can find it. He said, you see that string right there? Don't cut it off. He said, you see all those knots in there? There, there must be 20 or 30 knots in, in this string. He says, don't cut that off. He said, every one of those knots are someone who prayed for you. And when they got through praying, they came up and took this blanket and tied the knot in it. So I'm like, I'm so humbled. Here we are, here we are another 20 or 30 women I didn't know who prayed for me. But little did I know when I opened it up, there are four of those strings on here, all with about 20 or 30 knots on it. So all of those people, all those women that I did not know, even though it's a beautiful, I cherish it because of the prayer that was sent to me and for me during that time. Um, so when you think your bad news is devastating, don't remember, don't forget, he can take it and turn it around. Or you can't cope with something, or you can't cope with the death of a loved one. You just remember that Jesus is your shield, and your strength, and your light. And he wants you to invite him into your heart. And if you haven't, I pray that you will give that major consideration going forward. Thank you all again. Appreciate it. Don't leave, don't leave. Okay. Thank you, Hope. Um, so Hope's preparing for surgery on September. And uh, so Harrison, we talked about goodness of God, and I said, sing it this week. We, I don't care if we sang it last week. Sing it this week because all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. And so we want to sing in the goodness of God. So we want to continue to pray for you, so we're going to pray for you right now as uh, you prepare for that. Father, thank you for Hope, God, and for her commitment to you and her love for you. God, thank you for how she and we have seen your hand on her life over these last few, uh, last year and a half, so, so of, uh, of her journey, God. Thank you for being faithful to her. Thank you for touching her body and bringing great healing to her, God. But also, thank you more than anything. Thank you for continuing to show yourself to her even in her darkest days. God, thank you that we as a church can gather around her and encourage her and pray for her and love on her and her family during this time, God. May we uh, remember what we've done uh, for Hope and her family, God, and continue to just love on others the way we've loved on them. God, continue to bless her, Lord, as she prepares for surgery uh, in, in just a few short weeks. God, we pray that you uh, prepare her body for that, that you prepare the doctors and the nurses, God. And, Lord, I know that uh, you're, you're gonna, we're going to see a great work in her life through that. And, God, we're going to give you the praise and the glory for it, for what you're going to do. God, thank you so much. We love you, and we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right, Mr. Andrews, uh, if you come. Uh, Mr. Andrews. Uh, what year are you starting tomorrow? Number 40. Number 40. So come and share, Mr. Andrews. The thing I've got to say is that we're here today because of God's grace. 
There's just no doubt. I've said that numerous times. I've learned a lot through this venture the last year and a half or so. Um, and I'm, I had to jump back and forth a little bit with the time frame, but I hope it'll make sense. Um, March of 21, and sometime that month, I had talked to Brother Mark, and I said, I just want to stand up and speak to the church. And uh, that day, I thanked y'all, no doubt, for all the prayers, just like hope. It's so amazing, isn't it, hope? Um, but that day, I said to y'all, I really don't know what to say. I don't know how to say it. And I still kind of feel that way today, Brother Mark. And I've thought about it a lot, you know, and I've spoke to a couple of groups, but I still don't know if I'm saying it right. But that day, um, after I'd spoke to y'all, Kelly Kilcrease texted me and said, it was a brief text, and it said, just seeing you stand there says it all. So for me, for Hope, and so many of the rest of you, and I'm looking at people that I know have overcome some serious medical issues, and some have it now. And, of course, I'll deal with the medical issue until the good Lord decides to take me. Um, I think I've got this date right. It was June 18th when Brother Mark called me. And I was out in my mother and daddy's yard working, and it was very hot. And so he said, I want you to think about something. I want you to pray about it. I want to have a testimony day. And you and some others give their testimony. So I hesitated for a second, and I said, I'll do it, put me down, I don't have to pray. And me and Hope talked about it in Sunday school a day or a week or two later, you know, we knew we better get up and speak for the Lord because of what he's done for us. Um, and of course, like I said, I think that was June 18th on a Saturday, and then the next day, if I'm not badly wrong, I was going to ask Shelly and just didn't. I think was one of the most incredible days we had in our church. Wasn't it June 19th of all the baptisms? I'm just thankful I was still here to see that. So I'm told, and I've seen some pictures, December 13th, the night of December 13th, a lot of you gathered at church, at school, for a prayer vigil for me. I'm so thankful for all the prayers. And I'm still seeing people that I haven't seen in a long time, like we prayed for you, You're, you were on our church list, and I said, there's just so much power in prayer. So I've learned a lot along this way, this venture the last year or so. But I was not awake to understand what was going on but January 2nd of 2021 was a big celebration day. Carrie and Taylor, of course, you know, they they had to endure a lot, especially after I got home. Well, they've been to the hospital, Taylor and the doctor, sometimes, because one time I was tell, trying to tell them there was a spider in my ear, and uh, <laughs> they didn't understand what I was trying to say. And it was, I thought I was saying it, but apparently I wasn't. But anyway, January 2nd of 2021 was a big celebration day in that cardio unit. They were taking me off the ventilator, and I was still alive. Okay. Oh. Well, Cause I think, Kerry and Taylor, I think they said only about 20% 20, 20 or so leave alive. So they were taking me off the ventilator for a good reason. Um, one of the things I learned later on that the FFA officers had 
put together a plan to sell these little wrist bracelets that said living to serve, which is part of the FFA motto, but isn't it what God expects us to do? So February 10th was a big day of 2021 when I got to come home. And I wouldn't have it no other way to stop at the school where I had been the day I had the heart attack where a coach had him put me in his truck. A lot of people gathered. And then here comes Harrison driving the fire truck. It's, it's just so special, all the things that so many took time to do just for me. But oh, one of the things I've learned through this big lesson is that I need to spend more time doing for others as well. Um, one of the things that I learned I should spend more time reading devotion, reading the Bible, and... Um, that March, I started getting the little, I think they're called open windows, and I'm saying that right. Those things are great. So I've uh, several issues have like struck me, or several of the lessons, daily lessons. One of them, Isaiah 41.10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. One of the daily things, the point was, please be patient. God is not through with me yet. And hope shaking her, her head, and there's some others that's thinking about that one too. We know we've learned that there's no doubt there's power in prayer, and God has His plan, He has His purpose for us. And you know, the whole time I was in rehab, all I could think about was getting better. If they said walk 10 feet, I was trying to walk 15 because I was trying to get better. All I could think about was getting back to see people and going back to school. And so that, that has worked out. Just this morning in Sunday school, me and Hope was talking about it. She said, God will use us, and we know that's true. And Tim made the point our lesson was about God's love, His unconditional love. So just this very day, things have touched me and still part of the lessons that I'm learning. Psalms 145.17 The Lord is righteous in all His ways and holy in all His works. Just the other day, one of my friends sent me this text. Psalms 18, 20. His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is pure. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. So again, I've learned so much about God's presence, his protection and provisions and blessings of everyday life. We... we take it so for granted, but we have to stop, and, and I definitely had to stop and think. One of, one of the th issues for me were the, the heel sores that developed the first few weeks of my stay in the hospital, and I think that was just good the Lord's way of keeping me slowed down so I would listen and, and, and understand things. <laughs> So, I end with these two things. Things that I've seen, I, I, I really watch, look at church billboard signs when they go by. And I saw this one uh, a month or so ago. 
Worry ends when faith begins. Now, I've had to learn my lessons about faith and being strong. When I got out of the hospital, my heart function was at about 10 to 20%. By March, I'd already been back to the hospital. Dr. T had said, you know, your heart function's in the 30s. We'll work with your medicine. We'll never get you to 40, though, Mark. July of last year, my heart function was between 45 and 50. So, yes, ma'am, thank you, Ms. Sharon. So, all through this time, like this, this past, especially spring and summer, just the work I've been doing, I just kept thinking my heart function's got to be over 50%. Well, July 5th, I had an echocardiogram, and so when I went back to the doctor, he said, your, your function is in 30, the 30% range. I, said, I looked in and he said, are you sure, doc? Are you sure you're not reading it like back a year ago? He said, no. I said, I don't understand. He said, you don't worry about it. It's the first thing he said. Because I've got people that's in high 40s and 50s and they've got congestive heart failure. You have no symptoms of that. So I've learned that my faith's got to be strong. I have. Okay. And again, thank you for your support and all that y'all have done and, and all the help, the prayers. And again, I still see people who's praying for me. So one of the other signs I end with this, something I saw back after Christmas maybe. It was on church sign. It said TGIF, and it's the way we all should live every day. I know some days it's tough. TGIF, today God is first. Thank you. Hang on, Mr. Andrews. Thank, thank you for sharing. We want to pray for you also as God uh, continues to work. Father, thank you uh, for Mr. Andrews and for his commitment to you, God. And, I thank you for how you have been so faithful and good to him. And, God, I pray that you continue to touch his body, that you continue to work in his life, Lord, and may he continue to see your goodness each day. God, thank you for Carrie and Taylor, that they were able to be by his side for all those days and, and for what they're doing even today, God. Lord, thank you that uh, he's able to begin his 40th year of teaching. And, God, I pray that you continue to give him a platform to just uh, be your light uh, to all those students that he's impacting each day. God, use him. We love you and thank you. We pray this your son's name. Amen. Thank you. Thank both of y'all for uh, coming and sharing. And, uh, you know, we, we will do this again. And so I, I pray that uh, it is important that we see God at work. And we've seen God at work. And so uh, to hear your stories, thank y'all so much for sharing that. I want us to turn our heart uh, towards the Lord's Supper and our time of uh, partaking of that, and, and then we're going to have an invitation, and then we will partake of the Lord's Supper. But uh, I, I just want to share a couple of things uh, with you before we uh, partake. I, I won't be long. Trust me on that. Since 1921, uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier has provided a resting place for one of America's uh, unidentified World War I service members. Others were added to that Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in 1958 and in 1984. In March of 1926, they began guarding the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier during the daylight hours. In 1937, they began to guard the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier 24-7 a day, 365 days a year. And in April of 1948, the old guard began to, was, uh, began to guard the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, where the guard has changed every half hour during certain seasons of the year and then every hour during other seasons of the year. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, only uh, ceasing operation during uh, a couple of major uh, hurricanes that were in the area. 
they live underneath uh, the the ground there, where uh, on, on that uh, in that plaza area, and they. Um, if you've ever been to the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, you see those guards and their commitment. And 21 uh, is uh, significant. They march 21 steps and turn and pause 21 seconds and march back. And the way that they uh, they carry their rifle uh, on one, sh- one sh- shoulder, putting themselves between the tomb and the rifle. Why do they dedicate so much effort guarding these remains? Guarding the remains of someone they don't even know. Why, why do they spend so much time doing that? It's because they want to honor his life and his sacrifice. And so this morning we come to partake of the Lord's Supper. Why do we honor the Lord? Because we want to remember his life and his sacrifice. Why is this time as we partake of the Lord's Supper so important? Because we want to honor the Lord's life and his sacrifice, that he gave his life for you and for me. And so this morning, as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, we remember what he's done for you. We remember the price that was paid, the high price that was paid as he gave his life for us. We remember that. And so we are going to have a hymn of invitation. And I I pray that during this hymn of invitation that you think about the Lord and the sacrifice that was made, that he gave his life for you, that he died on the cross so that we can have forgiveness of sins. I pray that you think about the testimonies of God that you've heard today, how God has been so, so good to hope and to mark. And you think about your own life and how God has been so, so good to you and to me. And uh, I I pray that maybe this morning you need to trust the Lord Jesus. Maybe you need to surrender your heart and life to him. And so I pray that you do that today. Maybe you want to uh, recommit your heart to him and say, Lord, I I, want to live for you. Maybe this morning you want to unite with our church. Uh, I believe that God has spoken this morning through uh, the songs that we've we've sung through the testimonies that we've heard, and, uh, and I believe that we respond to him however we've spoken to our hearts. And so during this time, you respond to the Lord Jesus. Harrison, you come. Ms. Brenda, you come. Let's pray together as we prepare for our hearts for the invitation. Father, thank you for today and for uh, what we have seen and what we've heard and how we've heard of your faithfulness. God, I pray this morning that uh, as you've spoken to our hearts, God, that we respond to you this morning. Uh, You know how you've spoken to our hearts, and we know. And so, God, may we respond to you this morning. Maybe it's for salvation. Maybe it's to recommit our heart to you, Lord. Maybe it's to unite with this church. Maybe it's for some other reason, God. But uh, I pray that you, that, uh, you do business, and we do business with you this morning, that we respond to you in any way that you've spoken. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We pray this in your son's great name. Amen. So let's stand together this morning as we sing. This is hymn number 312.
thank you. You may be seated this morning, and if our deacons will come as we prepare to uh, partake of the Lord's Supper. This is a wonderful time. Uh, this is a holy time. This is a sacred time. You don't have to be a member of this church to partake of the Lord's Supper, but you must be a member of God's family. You must have trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And so I pray that this morning that you have uh, done that and that uh, we take this time and that you take this time to do business with the Lord Jesus and uh, that you uh, uh, listen. Uh, he speaks to your heart during this time. Let's pray again before we partake of this. Father, you prepare our hearts for what we are about to do, God. May we receive uh, this meal openly and honestly and be reminded of the great price that was paid for each of us. And God, may we remember what you have done for us and may we honor you this morning as we remember you. Father, lead us during this time. We pray this in your son's great name. All right, so uh, we're going to take time this morning and pass the bread and uh, then we will uh, have a word of prayer before we partake of it. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Y'all can pass.
This is a small piece of bread, but it represents the great price that was paid for you and for me as Jesus gave his life on the cross. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took this bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is uh, for you. You do this in remembrance of me. He gave his life uh, for you and for me. So, Chris, would you mind blessing us before we uh, to protect the bread? Again, this is a small cup of juice, but it represents a great price that was paid. And so, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25, he says, In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Ashley, would you pray for us? He says also in uh, later on, he says, for as often as you do this, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we do want to proclaim the Lord's death uh, until he comes. So thank you, gentlemen. You can be seated. Let me share just a couple of notes.